live from Munich, Germany, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Munich, Germany for DataWorks 2017 Summit. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante with theCUBE and our next two guests is John Thomas Volpe, Head of Customer Development EMEA for Alation. Welcome to theCUBE, and we yep. have Bertrand Caru, who's the Director of Solution Marketing at uh, Trifecta with Partners. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Great Thank you Thanks for having us. Yeah. Big fans of both your startups and growing. You guys are doing great. Uh, we had your CEO on our Big Data SV, um, uh, Joe Hellerstein, talking about the ring, all the cool stuff that's going on. Um, and Alation, we know Stephanie's been on many times. But you guys are, are startups that are doing very well and growing in this ecosystem. And, and uh, you know, everyone's going public. Cloud Air has filed their S1. Great news for those guys. So, the data world has changed beyond Hadoop. You're seeing it, obviously, um, Hadoop is not data, but it's still going to be a critical component of a larger ecosystem that's developing. You guys are part of that. So I want to get your thoughts of, uh, of why you're here in Europe, okay? And, and how you guys are working together to, to take data to the next level, because you know, we're hearing more and more, data is a foundational conversation starter because now there's other things happening. IOT, and business analysts, you guys are in the heart of it. Your thoughts? Maybe I'll leave, yeah. Sure. Um, so, definitely at Alation, what we're seeing is more and more people across the organization want to get access to the data. Uh, and we're kind of breaking out of the traditional roles around just IT managing both metadata, data preparation, like Trifact is focused on. Um, so, we're pretty squarely uh, focused on how do we bring that access to a wider range of people? How do we enable that social and collaborative approach? to uh, working with that data, whether it's in a data lake, so if we're here at uh, DataWorks, clearly that's uh, one of the main topics, but also other data sources within the organization. So you're freeing the data, but the whole collaboration thing is more of, okay, don't just look at IT as this black box of, give me some data and now spit, they spit out some data. Exactly. That's the old way. The new way is, okay, all the data's out there, they're doing their thing, but the collaboration is for the user yep. to get into that data, you know, ingestion, playing with the data, using the data, shaping the data, Absolutely. developing with the data, whatever they're doing, right? It's just bringing transparency to not only what um, IT is doing and making that accessible to users, but also helping users collaborate across different silos within an organization. <coughs> so, um, you know, we, we look at things like logs to understand who is doing what with the data. So if I'm working in one group, I can find out that somebody in a completely different group in the organization is working with similar data, bringing new techniques to uh, their analysis, and can start leveraging that and have a conversation that others can learn from too. So basically it's like a discovery platform for saying, exactly. hey, you know, Mary in, in Department X has got these models, I can leverage that. Is that kind of what you guys are talking yes, about? Yes, definitely. Um, kind of breaking through that, enabling communication across the different yeah. levels of the organization, and, and teaching other people at all different levels of maturity within the company, how they can start interacting with data and giving them the, the tools to upskill throughout that process. Uh, Bertrand, talk about the trifecta, because one of the things that I find exciting about your value proposition and talking to Joe, uh, this uh, founder, uh, besides the fact that they all have GitHub on their uh, about page, which is the coolest thing ever, because yeah. they're all developers, but the more reality is, is that a business person or person dealing with data in some part of the geography, could be whether it's in Europe or in the US, might have a completely different view and interest in data yeah. than someone in another area. It could be sales data, it could be retail data, it doesn't matter, but it's never going to be the same schema. That's so the issue is, got to take that away from the user complexity. Yeah. That is really fundamental change. Yeah, that, that you're totally correct in the, in the way. So information is there, it is available. Alation helps identify what is the right information that can be used. So if I'm in marketing, I could reuse uh, sales information associated maybe with web logs information. Alation will give me the opportunity to know what information is available and if I can trust it. If someone in finance is using that information, I can trust that data. So now, as a user, yeah. I want to take that data, maybe combine the data, and the data is always different format, structure, level of quality, and the, the work of data wrangling is really for the end user uh, you can be an analyst. Someone in the line of business, most of the time, these are uh, could be uh, uh, like uh, some of the customers we are here in Germany, like Unitree, would be actuaries, building risk models, um, and or claim forecasting, payment forecasting. So they're not technologists at all. 
but they need to combine these data sets by themselves and at scale. Uh, and the work they're doing, they're producing new information, and this information is used directly to their own business, but as soon as they share this information back to the data lake, Alation will index this information, see how it is used, and put it to uh, uh, this visibility to the other user for reuse as well. So, so do you guys have a partnership or just more of a standard API kind of thing? So we do have a partnership. Uh, we have uh, planned development in, on the roadmap, which is currently uh, happening. So I think by the end of the quarter, uh, Q2, yeah. we're going to be delivering uh, a new integration where uh, whether I'm in yeah. Alation and looking for data and finding something that I want to work with, I know it needs to be prepared, I can quickly jump into uh, Trifacta to do that. Yeah. Or the other way around in Trifacta, if I'm looking for data to prepare, I can open the catalog, quickly find out what exists okay. and how to work with it. So there. basically the relationship, if I get this right, is you guys pass on your expertise of the data wrangling and all the back processes you guys have and advertise that into um, elation, they discover it, make it serviceable for yeah. the social collaboration or the business collaboration. Exactly, and uh, when the data is wrangled, it's again indexed, and uh, so it's a virtual uh, uh, a circle where uh, all the data that is traded and combined is uh, exposed to the user to be reused. So yeah. So if I were a chief data officer, I'd say, okay, there's three sequential things that I, I need to do, and you can maybe help me with a couple of them. So the first one is I, I need to understand how data contributes to the monetization of my company, if I'm a public company or a for-profit company. That's, I guess, my, my challenge. But then the other two things are I need to give people access to that data, and, and I need quality. So I presume Alation can help me understand what data is available, um, I can actually, it kind of helps with number one as well, because I can say, okay, this is the type of data, this is how the business process works, yep. feed it, and, and then the access piece and the quality, I guess the quality is really where Trifacta comes in. Yep. Um, what, what about that sequential flow that I just described? Is that common uh, yes. in, in your, your business, your customer base? And it, it's definitely very how common. Do you uh, so kind of going back to the Munich re-example mm -hmm. since we're, we're here in Munich, uh, you know, they, they're very focused on providing uh, better services around risk reduction for their customers. Uh, data that can impact that risk uh, can be of all kinds from all different places. You have to have to think five, 10 years ahead uh, of where we are now to see where it might be coming from. Um, so you're going to have a ton of data going into the data lake. Just because you have a lot of data, that does not mean that people will know how to work with it. They won't know that it exists. Um, and especially since the volumes are so high, it doesn't mean it's all coming in in a greatly usable format. So Alation comes into play in helping you find not only what exists by automating that process of extraction, but also looking at what data people are actually using. So going back to your point of how do I know what data is driving value for the organization, if we can tell you, you know, in this schema, this is what's actually being used the most, uh, that's a pretty good starting point to focus in on what is driving value. And when you do find something, then you can move over to Trifacta to prepare it and get it ready for analysis. So, okay, so, so keying on that for a second. So in the, in the example of Munich Re, the value there is my reduction in expected loss. Right? I'm going to reduce my risk. Yep. That, that puts money in my, my bottom line. Um, okay, so you can help me with number one. And then take that Munich Re example into Trifacta. Yeah, so the user, uh, will be the same user using Alation and Trifecta. So, is an actuary. Uh, as soon as the actuary identifies the data that is uh, the most relevant for what it'll be planning, so the actuaries are working with terms like development triangles over 20 years. Uh, and usually it's colon by colon. So they have to pivot the data row by row. They have to associate that with the paid claims the new claims coming in. So all this information is different format. Then they have to look at maybe weather information or additional third party information where the level of quality is not well known. So they're bringing data in the leg that is not yet known and they're combining all this data. The outcome of that work that helps in their risk modeling so that could be used by, um, they, they can use SAS or R over technology for the risk modeling. But when they've done that modeling and building these new data sets, uh, they're again available to the community uh, because Alation would uh, uh, index that information and explain how it is used. Other things that we, we've seen with uh, uh, our users 
is uh, there is also a very strong, like if you think about insurances, banks, uh, pharma companies, uh, there is a lot of regulation. So as a user, if you are creating new data set, where the data is coming from, uh, where uh, the data is going, how is it using the company? So we are capturing all that information. Trifecta would have the rules to transform the data. Alation will see the overall high-level uh, high picture from Tableau to the source system where the data is coming. So super important yeah. as well yeah. for auditing. And just um, one follow-up. Yeah. In that example, the actuary, I know, I know hardcore data scientists hate this term, but yeah. the actuary is the citizen data scientist. Is that right? Yeah, actuaries would know, uh, um, I would say, statistics, usually. Yeah. But you've got multiple level of actuaries. You've got many actuaries that are Excel users. Yeah, yeah. They have to prepare data. They have to clean up, structure the data to give it to a next actuary that will be doing the pricing model or the next actuary that would be mm -hmm. the, the, the risk modeling. Yeah. You guys are hitting on a great formula, which is cutting edge, which is why you guys are on the startups. But Bertrand, I want you to talk to you about your experience at Informatica. You were the founder of Informatica France, and you're also involved in some product development in, yeah. the, uh, uh, in the old, I say old days, but like, yeah. you know, back in the days when structured data and enterprise data, which is actually a hard problem, yeah. dealing with metadata, dealing with search, you had schemas, all kinds of stuff to deal with, it was very difficult. Yeah. You have expertise, I want you to talk about what's different now in this environment, because it's still challenging, but now the world has got so much fast data. You got so much new IoT data, especially here in Europe, oh, yeah. where you have an industrialized focus. Certainly, Germany, case in point. But it's pretty smart mobility going on in Europe. Mm -hmm. You've always had that mobile environment. You got smart cities. A lot of focus on data. Yeah. What's the new world like now? How do people are dealing with this? What's your perspective? Yeah, so there's, um, and we all know about the big data, the, uh, and with all these volume, additional volume, and, and new structure of data. Uh, and I would say, legacy technology can deal, as you mentioned, with well-structured information. Also, you want to give that information to the masses, to, because the people who know the data, the data best are the business people. They know what to do with the data, but the, the, yeah. the access to this data is pretty complicated. So, where Trifecta is really differentiating and has been thinking through that is to say, whatever the structure of the data, IoT, uh, so web logs, uh, value per JSON, XML, we, we know that should be for an end user, just a matrix, a table. Yeah. But that's the way you understand the data. The next thing when you play with data, um, usually uh, you don't know what the schema would be at the end yeah. because you don't know what the outcome is. So you are, as an end user, you are exploring the data, combining data set, and, and the structure is trading as you discover the data. Yeah. So that is also something new compared to the old model where an end user would go to the data engineer to say, I need that information, can you give me that information? And engineers would look at that and say, okay, we can access here, what is the schema? There was like all these back and forth. And there's now, also, there yeah. was so much friction in the old way because the creativity of the user is independent now of all that scaffolding and yeah. all the wrangling, pre-processing. So, I get yeah. that piece of the citizens yeah. journal, uh, citizen journal, citizen uh, analyst. But the key thing here is that you're extracting away the complexity yeah. right, to get the job done. So the question then comes in, and because it's interesting, all the, the theme here at DataWorks uh, Summit in Europe and, and in the U.S. is all the big transformative conversations are starting with business people. Yeah. So it's the business units or the the front lines, if you will, not yeah. IT. Yeah. Although IT's got to now support that. So, if that's the case, the world's shifting to the business owners, yeah. hence your startups. Is that kind of getting yeah. that right? I, I think so. And I think that's also where we're kind of positioning ourselves, which is, you have a data lake, you can put tons of data in it, but if you don't make an, find an easy way to make that accessible to a business user, you're not going to get the value out of it. Um, it's just going to become a storage place. Uh, so really, what we focus on is how do you make that layer easily accessible? How do you share around it, bring some of the common business practices to that, and make sure that they're communicating yeah. with IT. So IT should never, shouldn't be kind of cast aside, uh, but they should have a relation, uh, an ongoing relationship with yeah. the business user. By the way, I'll point out that, you know, Dave knows I don't really, I'm not a big fan of the data lake concept, mainly because um, they've turned into data swamps because IT deploys it we're done, you know, check the box. Data's in there. But yeah. the data's getting stale because it's not being leveraged. You cannot, you're not unpacking yeah. the data or exactly. making it addressable or discoverable or even wranglable. 
Well, that's a word, yeah. but I mean, my point is, is that that's all complexities. Yeah. Yeah, so we call it also the frozen data lake. You build a lake and then it's frozen, nobody can come fishing. You play hockey on it. You <laughs> dig a hole and yeah. you fish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you need to have this collaboration uh, ongoing with the, the IT people because they own the infrastructure. They can feed the lake with data with the business. If there's no collaboration, and we've seen that multiple times, yeah. data lake initiatives, uh, and then we come back one year after, there is no one using the, the lake, like one, two percent of yeah. the, the processing power or the data is used. Nobody is going to the lake. So you need to index the data, catalog the data to know what yeah. is available. And the psychology yeah. for IT is important here. I was talking yesterday with IBM folks uh, um, at the party here, but this is important because IT is not necessarily in a position of you know, doing it because doing the frozen lake or data swamp because they want to screw over the business people, they just do their job, but here you're empowering them because you guys are got some tech that's enabling IT to do a data lake or data environment yeah. that allows them to kind of free up the, yeah. the hassles, but more importantly, satisfy the business customer. Yeah, exactly. So you know what I'm saying, yeah. so there's a lot of tech involved, and certainly uh, we've talked to you guys about that. Talk about that dynamic of the psychology because that's what IT wants. Yep. It's almost a DevOps mindset for data, data ops, if you will, or you know, data as code, if you will, is what concept we've been calling it, but that's now the cloud ethos hits the data ethos kind of coming together. Yeah, so uh, I think data catalogs are slightly different in that traditionally they are more of an IT function uh, to some extent mm -hmm. on the metadata side, uh, whereas on the business side it tended to be a siloed uh, organization of information that the business itself kept and maintained very manually. So we've tried to bring that together. Um, all the different parties within this kind of process, from the IT side to the governance stewardship, all the way down to the analysts and data scientists can get value out of a data catalog and can help each other out throughout that process. Um, so if it's communicating to end users what kind of impact any change IT will make, um, that makes their life easier and have one way to communicate that out and see what's going to happen, um, but also understand what the business is doing for governance or stewardship. You can't really govern or uh, curate if you don't know what exists and what matters to the business itself. So bringing those yeah. different stages together and helping them help each other is really what Alation does. Talk about the pros prospects uh, that you guys are engaging from a customer standpoint. What are some of the conversations of those customers you haven't gotten yet together? And also give an example of a customers that you guys have and use cases where they've been successful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so typically what we see is that an organization is starting up a data lake or they already have legacy data warehouses. Often it's both together. Um, and they just need a, a unified way of making information about those environments available to end users, and they want to have that better relationship. So we're often seeing IT engaged in trying to develop that relationship along with the business. Uh, so that's typically how we start, and we, in the process of deploying, um, kind of work into that conversation of now that you know what exists, you know what you might want to work with, you're often going to have to do some level of preparation or transformation. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes Trifact a really great fit for us as a partner. Um, they kind of come into that next step. Yeah, on, uh, on Mopo, like market share, one of our common customer, we have BNSF, also common customer, eBay, common customer. So we've got already multiple customer and so some uh, information about the, the issue. Market share, uh, they have to deal with uh, their customer information. So the first thing they, they receive is data, digital information about ads, and uh, so it's really marketing type of data. They have to assess the quality of the data. They have to understand uh, what values and combine the, the value with their existing data to provide back analytics to their customer. And uh, in, in that use case, we were talking to the business users, like people selling market share to their customers because the fastest they can onboard their data, they can qualify the quality of the data, uh, the easiest it is to, to, to deliver right level of quality analytics and also to engage more customers. So it was really uh, to be fast onboarding customer data and deliver analytics. And where Alation is playing is that they can then analyze all the SQL statement that uh, uh, the, the customers are, and maybe I'll let you talk about the use case, but there's also, it was the same users mm -hmm. uh, looking at the same information. So we engage with the business users. Exactly. So I wonder if we could talk about the different roles. Um, yep. You hear about the data scientist, obviously, the data engineer, there might be a, a quality, data quality professional yeah. involved. There's certainly the application developer. These guys may or may not even be in IT. Then you got a yep. DBA, 
Uh, then you may have somebody who's sort of a statistician. They might sit in the line of business. Um, is this, am I overcomplicating it? Do, do larger organizations have these different roles and how do you help bring them together? Uh, so I'd say that yeah. those roles are still kind of in flux in the industry. Uh, sometimes it's they sit on IT, legs, right? yeah. they, sometimes it's in IT, yeah. sometimes they sit in the business. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of movement happening and it's not a, a consistent definition of those uh, different roles. Um, so I think you, it, it comes down to different functions and sometimes you find those functions happening within different places in the company. So stewardship and governance may happen on the IT side or they may, might happen on the business side and it's almost a maturity scale of how involved the two sides are um, within that. Um, so we, we kind of play with all of those different groups so it, it's sometimes hard to narrow down exactly who it is um, but generally it's on the consumption side whether it's the analyst or data scientist um, and there's definitely crossover between the two groups moving up towards yeah. the governance and stewardship that wants to enable those users um, or document and curate the data for them all the way up to the IT data engineers that operationalize a lot of the work that the data scientists and analysts might be mm -hmm. hypothesizing and working with in their research. And, yeah. and you sell to all of those roles or who do you, who's your primary sort of user you know, constituency, your advocate? Uh, so we sell both to the analytics groups as well as governance mm -hmm. and they often uh, kind of merge together. We tend to talk to all of those constituencies throughout uh, a sales cycle. And, and how, how prominent in your customer base do you see the, the role of the chief data officer? Is it, is, it, is it only confined within sort of regulated industries? Is it you're seeing seep into non-regulated industries? I'd say for us, um, it seeps into non-regulated industries what too. What percent yeah. of the customers, for instance, have, you know, yeah, just anecdotally, not even customers, just people that you talk to have a chief data officer? Formal chief data officer. Um, I, I'd say probably about 60, 70 percent. That high? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More. Yeah. Same for us. In regulated industry, in regulated but also industry. over. Uh, I think they, they play a role. Uh, very often, it's chief data and analytic officer. That's uh, uh, data and analytics. So they have a, uh, and they have to look at governance. Governance could be for regulation sure. because you have to. Uh, you've got governance policy. Which data can be combined with which data? There is a lot, and you need to have that. But then, it's, uh, even if you are less regulated, you need to know what data is available and uh, what data is trustworthy. So you have uh, this requirement as well. We see them a lot. They are more and more powerful, I would say, in the enterprise when, when they're able to uh, collaborate with the business to enable the business. Uh, guys, thanks yeah. so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on your partnership. Final uh, word I'll give you guys uh, before we end the segment is, Share a, um, a story, obviously you guys have a, a unique partnership. Um, you've been in the business for a while, breaking into the business with Dilation, hot startups. What observation is out there that people should know about that might not be known in this data world? Obviously there's a lot of you know, false premises out there on, on what the industry may or may not be, but there's a lot of, certainly a sea change happening. You see AI gets a mental model for people, machine learning, autonomous vehicles, smart cities, some amazing kind of magical things going on. But for the basic business out there, they're struggling. To, and there's a lot of opportunities if they get it right. What thing, observation, data, pattern you're seeing that people should know about that uh, may not be known? It could be something um, anecdotal or something specific. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe uh, that will be surprising, but uh, like Kaiser is a big customer of us, uh, and you know Kaiser in California in yeah, the U.S. Sure. are big. Uh, they have hundreds of thousands of hospitals, and surprisingly, uh, some of the supply chain people were. I've been working for years trying to analyze, uh, optimizing the relationship with their suppliers. So. Typically, they would buy um, uh, a staple gun without staples. Okay, stupid. But they see that happening over and over with many products. They were never able to solve it because why? Uh, that would be one product. They have to go to IT. They have to work. It would take two months, and then there is another supplier, new product. So, how to know? Which They're chasing are... their tail. Yeah, yeah but, <laughs> but okay. So that would be. Uh, it's not like super excited, but they are now to do that in a couple of hours. So for them, they are able by going to the data lake, see what data, see how this hospital is buying, 
they were not able to do it. So there is nothing magical here. It's just giving access to the data who know the data best, the analysts. So your point is don't yeah. underestimate the, the innovations that, as small as it may seem it's or inconsequential could have huge impacts. Yeah, the, the, the innovation goes with the process to be more efficient. Uh, with the data, not so much building new products, mm -hmm. it's just basically being good at what you do, so then you can focus on the value you bring to the company. John Thomas, what's your thoughts? So, sort of related, um, I would actually say that something we've seen pretty often is uh, c companies, all sizes, are all struggling with very similar, uh, similar problems in the data space specifically. So it's not a big companies have it all figured out, small companies are, are behind trying to catch up, and small companies aren't necessarily super agile and aren't able to change in a drop of a hat. Um, so it's a journey. It's a journey and it's understanding what your problems are with the data in the company, and it's about figuring out what works best for your solution uh, or for your, for your problems, um, and understanding how that impacts everyone in the business. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really a, a learning process to understand what's going to What do your fit. friends who aren't in the tech business say to you, hey, what is this, what's this data thing? How do you explain it? The fundamental shift, how do you, what do you say to them? So, uh, I'm more and more getting people that already have an idea of what this data thing is, which five years ago was not the case. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, it was, oh, that, what's, what's data? Tell me more about that. Why do you need to know about what's in these databases? Uh, now they actually get why that's important. So it's becoming a concept that everyone understands. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of kind of moving into practice and how that actually works. Operationalizing it, exactly. all the things you're talking about. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much uh, for bringing the insights. We wrangled it here on theCUBE, <laughs> live. Congratulations on Trifecta Innovation. Great startups, you guys are doing great. Good to see you guys successful again. Rising tide floats all boats in this in open source world we're living in. And this is, we're bringing you more coverage here at DataWorks 2017. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay with us, more great content coming after this short break. <laughs>